I'm a soldier.
come, we'll have a morning intercessory prayer by Brother Kareem, and then the choir is going to come, and they're going to give us the selections that they have. I believe it'll be two selections in the Sermonic Hymn. And then right after that, we'll have a very good way of capping off this Thanksgiving week with our very dear friend and sister, Dr. Blum. Amen. From the Greater Dalton Baptist Church. She comes with us uh, every year. About this time after Thanksgiving, we're so happy to have her here today. Amen. She has the Word of God, and we're going to prepare our hearts to receive her. And so she's certainly no stranger. Every Amen. time she comes, she comes with a message Amen. from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Nothing Amen. fake, nothing phony, no nonsense. Right. And so we're thankful to have her here with us today. Amen. And after the sermonic hymn, she's going to come and uh, she's going to bless us with what it is that the Lord has uh, for us to hear. Amen. 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 So let's receive her right now by saying amen. 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 Yes. yes. Dear Father God, we come to you as a congregation. We come humbly asking forgiveness for our transgressions and blessings for the future. Father God, we are not perfect. So help us with that imperfections. Help us become the men, the women that we're supposed to be before we see you in the physical, Father God, and the spiritual. Father God, when we speak, May they hear Jesus. May they hear positivity and life instead of death, Father God. When we walk out of this congregation, may we still be with you and have your presence with us, Father God. For with you, we can always move forward and not get held back by any obstacle that is in our way. Father God, we ask for strength, <coughs> discipline, intelligence with everything that we have. And may we have everything in your grace and your manner, Father God. Father God, I humbly ask you. That should help me and everyone here develop and grow and evolve. For to stay stagnant is death and to grow is life, Father God. Amen. So even though we're in the dirt, you should know that one day we'll see the sun and your son. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One thing the Bible said, where there's two or three. That's what he said. Gather together. Amen. In his name. Amen. Nobody else's name. Amen. In his name. Amen. He said I would be in the midst. Amen. So I feel him already. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good to us. At least we can praise him because he said I inhabit the praises of my people. And we are God's people. Am I right about it? Amen. I'll be coming from the book of Joshua. Amen. The sixth chapter, verses 15 through 20. And if you have your sword, amen, you can read along with me. Amen. Amen. The sixth chapter. Hallelujah. And it reads, And it came to pass on the seventh day, that they rose early about the dawning of the day, and they compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, Amen. for the Lord has given you the city. Amen. And the city shall be a curse, even it, and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she sh and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we went, and ye in uh, any wise keep yourselves from the accused things, lest ye make yourselves a curse, when ye take the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble. But all the silver and gold, and the vessels of brass and iron, are con concentrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasure of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout right. that the wall fell flat, mm. so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Whatever is yours, you're going to get it. Amen. 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 To God be all the glory. Whatever is yours, you're going to get it. Amen. 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 My subject today, if I would use one, was saving strongholds must come down. Amen. Right. Satan's strongholds must come down. Must is a promise. It will. It will come down. Amen. Now, God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, because you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, in several of President Bush's speeches, he made the statement that we will flush the tourists out of their holes and we will get them on the run and then we will bring them down. That's what the President Bush said. Amen. He also said we will either bring them to justice or we will bring justice to them. But justice will be done. Amen. Amen. He had a, a, a compound statement, profound statement that he knew what he was talking about. Amen. However, Mr. Mr. Bush knew that until the strongholds of these terrorists were destroyed, we stand in danger of another attack, Amen. even today. Amen. Amen. With yes. What is a stronghold? Is it a place having strong defenses where the enemy can retreat to feel safe? Amen. And our stronghold is in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 How many know that we are safe in the arms of Jesus? Amen. No matter what comes Amen. around us, Amen. Amen. we are covered under the blood. Yes. It is also called a faulty thinking pattern based on lies and deceptions, which is one of the primary weapons of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because it is the building block for a stronghold. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. We know all of that. Amen? Amen. But the Bible told us if we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. He didn't say invite him in, open up the door and let him in. That's some of what we do. That's why we can't fight the devil. Because he's fighting against us with what we have given him. Amen. Strongholds can be in areas of weaknesses within. 
We are tempted over and over where we to give in to Satan to attack our heart. Amen. The stronghold is where sin captivates and controls us because it starts within. Amen. Everything that's, that starts in us, it starts within. Amen. Not without, it starts within. Amen. Amen, it starts within. Satan waits until we are not looking. Then he sends out an attack for war to inflict pain and suffering. We must realize, my brothers and sisters, all believers are in a war with the adversary. Amen. All believers, I didn't say non-believers, all believers, Amen. they are in a war with the adversary. The evil spiritual forces which he dispatches and assigned to perpetrate his weaknesses through the world. The enemy's plan is to establish a stronghold Hallelujah. Amen. In the area of my life and yours. Mm -hmm. And then hold us bondage to it. As long as we follow him, he'll do it. Amen. But if you turn to Christ, he can't yeah. follow Christ. That's right. That's right. You see, we have accommodated strongholds for so long until our personalities is identified with it. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me now? Amen. We say things like, I just can't help it. Or that's the way I am. Amen. That's the way you want to be. That's right. Because Christ made us in his own image. Amen. I can't help it because you don't want to help it. Amen. But if something you want to help, you make it happen. You make it happen. Amen. The problem is we have acted in an abnormal way for so long that abnormal seems the normal way. Amen. Amen. What a bad way to be. Amen. Joshua's stronghold was a wall city called Jericho. This city had to be destroyed if Israel ever hoped to advance into the promised land. Amen. The walls of the city was large enough for homes to be built. Well. Furthermore, we know that the walls were high because the spies had to use a cart to climb down from Rahab's house to the ground. Mm -hmm. These walls were high enough to keep Israel out and the inhabitants safe inside. Amen. Amen. I'm thinking on the walls of Jesus. Yes. Amen. He's able to keep us safe from anything. Yeah. Nothing can come past him. Right. No matter what it is, that's why we need to stay wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in yeah. Jesus. Yeah. In other words, no one went out, no one came in. Amen. Amen. The battle for Jericho was a battle against spiritual strongholds. Right. Nevertheless, God gave Joshua a found word in verse 2, which read, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hands Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. In other words, God promised Joshua victory if he would do what God instructed him to do. Amen. How many know that we will get victory yeah. in Christ Jesus? Yeah. If only we will do what he tell us to do. Yeah. Why is it that we got to have it our way all the time? All right. It's not our way. It's God's way or no way. That's what the word is God's way or no way. Because when I last read it, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So it's got to be God's way and not our way. And remember, when we think it's our way, we're not getting nowhere. And no, we're getting in other folks' way. Men and women of God, there is a condition to the promise of God. That condition is called obedience. How many know that obedience is better than a sacrifice? Amen. Amen. The sacrifice that God got us up and brought us into the house of worship. Amen. Obedient is that he said, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he inhabit the praises of his people. Amen. This is what it is when we go to God for a word. We must remember that God's ways are not man ways. Amen. God plans are greater. Hallelujah. Than what we think or imagine. Amen. Satan's strongholds come down first of all by what? Recognizing the stronghold. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, don't be ignorant to what Satan is doing. Mm -hmm. Read your word. That's right. That's right. And the Bible of God will let you know yeah. that he come to do three things, as I said before. Oh. Kill, steal, and destroy. Right. But it didn't stop there. Jesus came that we might have life. And have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. Recognize the stronghold, meaning to acknowledge or take notice of in some indefinite way. Amen. We must realize that we are in a spiritual warfare, yes. my brothers and sisters. Yes. Keep it in mind 
Satan is the master at building spiritual strongholds. There are strongholds in our lives and in churches that need to be destroyed. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Why do you think that the, the, the judgment will start in the house of prayer? Because the strongholds got to be destroyed. Amen. Amen. And God is the only one that can destroy them with his power. Amen. Amen. There are some things that needs to die. Can I get a witness? Amen. However, not knowing our strongholds will be difficult for us to take charge of what's happening to us. Amen. That's why we got to know when the devil stick his head up. Amen. My late bishop told us that. Know when the devil stick his head up. But if you don't know the devil, you don't know when he stick his head up. Amen. Amen. You think it's something else going on. But it's the devil trying to deceive us. Amen. Unless we are willing to put something to death, my brothers and sisters, we will, we will never have victory because death is our only hope for victory. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. The devil's strategy is to di disguise his activities so that it appears that someone or something else is to be the blame. Amen. How about Adam and Eve playing the blame game? put it on you and you put it on me. Wow. You can't put it on nobody because God knows who he gave it to. Right. He gave the plan to Adam. Amen. 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 And, and he let weakness get him where he got. Yep. He put he wants us to put our attention on his substitute if you will, surrogate or substitute. One appointed to act in the place of him so that our battles will be directed against the symptoms instead of the real source. All right. For example, my brothers and sisters, we know a decongested pill will help relieve a stuffy nose, but it will not cure cold. Right. Likewise, we can fight with the symptom of Satan, but we will not end the problem until the deal of the source and bind the strong man, which is the enemy. Right. Keep in mind, Satan attacks keep us from progressing with God. It always give us an excuse. But with God, there is no excuses. Amen. They were all nailed to the cross. Bam, bam, bam. Amen. They were nailed to the cross. So we don't have any excuses, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Like Joshua, we cannot claim victory, peace, or joy until the strongholds come down. Right. You can't do it. Jesus made this promise. He will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How many know that God's power is unleashed when we as believers act on his word? His word is a light and a lamp unto our feet. His word is what keeps us daily. His word is what feeds us. Satan's job is to make us think right is wrong and wrong is right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's so much of that going on in the world today. Yes. Yes. Seems like everything is right for the sinner man. Amen. And everything is wrong for the people of God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we must cast down every thought that comes to our mind that opposes the word of God. Amen. God has equipped us with his power to overcome Satan and his tricks. Amen. He's given us power. Use the power that you have. We don't realize we have it until we use it. My second point, prepare for battle. We must put on the whole arm of God. In other words, make ready beforehand or plan in advance. Don't wait till the enemy knock on your door and then lock the door. Amen. Lock the door before they come that way. Most Christians have forgotten that the Christian life is not a playground. It's a battlefield. Yes. It's a battlefield. Yes. We are working out our soul salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Yes. As a result, very few of the Lord's people are armed this morning. Yes. We're scared to go out of our doors. We're scared to come to church. We're scared to get on our knees and pray. We're afraid about everything. But you've got to be equipped and ready to wage the, fear, the spiritual battle. Yeah. Yeah. Be ready for it. God gave us the instruments to put on. Put them on one by one. Yeah. That way you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. 
you are equipped. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, we need to know the key of defeating the devil is to understand how he works. Uh -huh. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, we need to understand that. Yeah. How the devil work. Yeah. We can look at the people in the church and see how they work. Yes. Come up with our own decision. Yes. Some that somebody put in each other's ears. Yes. But no, do you know, do you know how the devil work? Mm -hmm. That's what we need to know. That's right. God got his own people. Yes. And he works from the inside out. Exactly. If we are to stay in our battles, we must possess energy for the battle. We must be equipped like a lamb in a field with wolves. Uh, yeah. Be alert. Our enemy, the devil, prowl around mm. like a lion mm. looking for someone he can devour. Yeah. Yeah. If we are to be successful in our work for the Lord, my <laughs> brothers and sisters, we must be prepared for battle and ready to go to war even right now. Yeah. When the word is being delivered, Satan is in somebody's ear. Yeah. Want to fight the preacher. But how can you hear without a preacher? How can he preach without God has sent him? You got to hear from a preacher, whether you like it or not. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah. As believers, we are in God. We have the right to use the authority that Jesus has given us. In the name of Jesus, we bind up every demonic experience that God is not pleased with. Bind it up. Take authority over Satan's activities. Take authority over the strongholds. My brothers and sisters, we got to stand for something or either we'll fall for everything. But I come to let you know I'm standing on the promises of God. Whatever God said, I believe it. If he said it's going to happen, it will happen. I'm going to stand until he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Been faithful over a few things. Enter on up in heaven. I make thee ruler over many. Are you going to stand with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be the glory. Yeah. We're going to stand on his promise because none of his promises lie. That's right. If he said it, yeah. it will come to pass. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, it will come to pass. Yeah. Because God that I serve, he cannot lie. Right. Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. He cannot lie. Yeah. Finally, my brothers and sisters, God has given us authority to stand up and declare the power of darkness will not lower over my life. Amen. We are not in darkness. Amen. We are in the light. Amen. We are a city that sit on a hill. Amen. We are not supposed to be hid. Amen. Let our light shine so men and women will see the good works in us and want to glorify the God that you hear us talking about. The God that we serve in the house of God. The God that we serve in the streets. The God that we're walking up and down the streets uh, throwing our hands up in the car. Hallelujah. Tell it down, men and women, that the wages of sin is still death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Let us hold on to our faith, my brothers and sisters. Remember, there are times when we have to act on what we believe. Amen. And guess what? The time is right now. Amen. If you believe that God died for you, then act on it. Amen. If you believe that he went to the cross and shed his blood for you and I, act on it. Amen. If you believe he rose on the third day, act on it. Amen. If you believe he fed thousands, two five thousand with two loaves of fish, act on it. Amen. If you believe he said, I'm going to get up again, you can destroy this body. But in three days, I'll rise up again. If you believe it, act on it. Hallelujah, Jesus. How is it done? It's done by demonstrating God's power and placing our faith in an awesome God who can do all things but fail. Do you know he can do it? Have you tried it? I know he can. I'm still here. You are still here. Because he is the impossible God. He can do all things. There is nothing too hard for our God. If you call on him, he will answer prayer. He will come to your rescue. No matter what's going on, God got it. God got it. God got it. There's a place for battle. And guess where it's on your knees? 
You can't go no lower than your knees. Keep on your knees. Stay right there. We know the battle is not ours. You got to remember it is the Lord's. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, the Lordship of our life belongs to Jesus Christ. And when we trust and submit to him, our victory is secure in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, in conversation we speak of God's power. In church we sing the Lord will make a way. Do you believe he'll make a way somehow? He made a way for us to get here this morning. He made a way that we could have a Thanksgiving day. Somebody didn't get up on Thanksgiving day. Somebody didn't have something to eat up. But I'm so glad that I know the God that I serve. He will make a way somehow. When the enemy come against us like a flood, he will pull up a stand up. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. It's on the battlefield. We don't take the leap of faith that God has given us. We are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory to Jesus Christ. Amen. We all need to get up, dress up, and stand up. And God will lead us to victory. Though we are in a, in a fight, victory belongs to us. David said in Psalm 7 verse 1, O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all of them that persecute me and deliver me. In other words, David is saying, I am depending on you, Lord, to save me from my persecutors. I can't do it myself. You got all power. I'm running to you like dear life, God. And in God, catch me. I will finish it. In Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5, we have an absolute promise from God that he tells us for the weapons, hallelujah, of our warfare. Listen, they're not carnal, but mighty through the, what? The breaking down of God, of strongholds, casting down imagination from every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought that you're thinking that nobody know but you. Hallelujah. In the obedience of Christ. Last but not least, prayer is the mightiest weapon. Prayer will accomplish what an ultimate will not do. But I come by to tell you that God will he'll take care of everything he said. If he said he's going to do it, put your foot on it and stand right there. Wait on the Lord and while you're waiting be a good courage. I know he will strengthen your heart. Strongholds, you got to talk to it. Tell them to get out of my way. I'm on my way to a better place and you can't hold me back. Strongholds, you can't stay here. You can't stay in here. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus, it'll wash you whiter than snow. The blood of Jesus washed our sins away. Stronghold, you gotta go. I'm going where Jesus is. They tell me where Jesus is. Tis heaven there. I'm on my way. Stronghold, get out of my way. I'm a marching up the king's highway. I'm marching up the king highway. I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. You gotta get rid of them. Don't let them keep you down. We serve a God that will fight any battle. But he told us, he said, the battle is not yours. You be still. <laughs> and let me fight it. You notice when we fight something, we, we'll lose. If we don't have Christ in it. Christ is the final, the final one that we need to depend on. No matter what we're going through. You got strongholds in your life. Don't think you're not. Satan come in every angle. He come in every form and fashion. He disguises himself that he didn't think Jesus knew who he was. But Jesus looked at him and said, Satan, get thee behind me. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you need to know who Satan is and know who your strongholds are. Get rid of them. 
Get rid of them. So you can get from earth to glory. Go to that place that Jesus prepared for us. That where he is, there we can be also. God loves you. And so do I. Think about it. The strongholds that's telling you, I ain't coming to church. I don't want to be bothered. That's not Christ. That's right. Christ is love. Amen. And if we don't have love, you don't even think about having Christ. Don't even think about it. Because God is love. Amen. He will tell Satan to get behind. Amen. And you can come out and hear the word of God. Fellowship with your sisters and brothers in Christ. Amen. Through love. Through love. Through love. Amen. Love is what the world is missing, my brothers and sisters. Amen. We need to show more love. Amen. They come in the church and we don't have no love to show to nobody. Why would they come in here? Amen. They used to say the, the church was a hospital. Amen. But then I hear some of them say you get sicker in the church. Amen. No doctors around. Get on board with Christ. Amen. You say you love Jesus, love his people. Amen. And every stronghold Amen. will come down. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to ask you, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Lord and personal Savior? That's going to be the only way to get every stronghold pulled down. The one that's keeping you from total salvation. You need to know him today. And how you do that is to repent, change your mind, and come to Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. He gave his life, he shed his blood. And that's the only thing that's going to be worthy enough to substitute, to give you eternal life, to give you full coverage for your sins, total payment for your sins, for eternity. Do you know him today? Not just what you heard about him, but do you know him? In a relationship whereby you have your sins totally forgiven, and you have eternal life, and you have a position with Christ forever and ever. Do you know him in that way? Well, if not, you're going to get to know him. And today is today Amen. that you should make that decision in your mind Amen. permanently about where you're going to spend eternal life. That's right. Your soul is the most important thing. You made a lot of decisions about a lot of other things, but have you made the ultimate decision that you truly have to make? And that's about your soul and where you're going to spend eternity. Well, I've never thought about it. Well, today's the day Amen. to give us some strong consideration. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way that you're going to have eternal life. You don't want to come down to the end when your spirit and your soul separate from your body and figure out that you don't have enough to pay for your sins with and that you could have had them paid for. That's no time. The time is right now. Yes. Or maybe you've gotten away from the Lord. You've drifted out of fellowship. You need to come back to the Lord, not religion, not churchiness, not self-righteousness, but you need to come back to a right fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to get back on the ball. You need to get work done for the Lord. You need to start serving. You need to humble yourself. Get rid of your pride. Drop everything right where it is and come back to your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ once again. He's waiting for you. He's right there waiting for you. You know what he'll do? He'll repair all that old, whatever mess you've made. He'll take away the shame, the guilt, and he'll start you right back from where you started. Come and do the first work again. Amen. Give your life to him. Amen. If that's you, wherever you're watching from, if you're here today, uh, I'd like to talk to you. And um, right now I'm going to pray for you. Dear Father, I just want to come in Jesus' name and thank you, Father, for this opportunity that we've had to hear your word today. Father, I thank you for uh, Dr. Blount. Lord, I thank you for your word being in her. And I'm asking, Lord, that you would just draw people into your kingdom. Draw people to the cross like only you can. I pray that you would do whatever it takes to break their heart, Father. Break them out of their way. Let them follow their way. 
that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your saving power. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. And I'm praying that upon your people right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give Dr. Blount a round of applause. Dr. Blount, I really thank God for you because you came right with God's word today. Just the very thing that God laid on my heart in prayer today, and I know you weren't there. When I was praying to God, and when God was showing me the things that he was showing me, and laying on my heart the things he was laying on my heart, and here you come bringing it right through the pulpit. Amen. That's nothing but God. That's the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for you allowing God to use you. Whatever capacity he has to use you. Uh, you continue on doing the things that God has definitely called you to do today. And uh, we thank God even for the end of this uh, Thanksgiving holiday. You know, I'm glad that a lot of people look to what was most important, more so this year. We were really stressing that. Fellowship, family, more importantly, you're still here by the grace of God. Amen. Although certain things happened to you, didn't happen, certain things happened around you, you're still here. Amen. Think from last Thanksgiving uh, holiday to now, Amen. to this time. Look at all that happened, look at all that didn't happen, you're still here. And you're a testimony. You got a witness for the Lord, amen? Your light is shining for the Lord. You got a lot to be thankful for, truly to be thankful for. And keep that attitude, that mindset of thanksgiving continually. And God will carry you forward, amen? Amen. I'm very happy for this day. Um, right now I'm going to just pray. Uh, actually, we're going to give the benediction, and Deacon's going to take charge from there. Then we're going to have a few announcements uh, very briefly, and then we'll be ready to go from there. Amen? Amen. 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 So stand and let us receive the benediction. Now may the God of all comfort and grace establish your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore, until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.